Hey everyone, Mike Miller with the Herald Times. I'm joined by IU football columnist Andy Graham here today. We're just checking in after Indiana opened up its fall camp on Wednesday afternoon. It's football season officially now in Bloomington. It is Kevin Wilson's sixth season as Indiana head coach, and they're starting out camp looking for a quarterback. Mm -hmm. Richard Lego, Xander Diamant will get the bulk of the reps at that quarterback position at the beginning of camp. It really is a two-man race heading into these first few weeks, and uh, really, I think before long, we may see a front runner at that position. Yeah, I think so. I mean, I do think that uh, uh, they're going to want to suss this out and have a front runner in position uh, before they go to the September 1st home opener on a Thursday night down in Miami against Florida International. Uh, but I also think that uh, it's likely that more than one quarterback will play this season. That's been the it's been the uh, uh, modus operandi with IU football since uh, Kevin Wilson got here. Uh, but I do think this is one of those situations where you have an offense in place that pretty much is ready to score points so long as the quarterback plays adequately and is a good technician and doesn't get in the way and helps facilitate things because there are veterans. There are four fifth-year seniors on the line. There are veteran receivers. There are veteran running backs. Uh, a lot of experience, depth everywhere. And Kevin Wilson, one of the things he likes about that is that whomever the new quarterback is uh, won't necessarily have to be the de facto leader of the team because there's a lot of leadership, a lot of experience, a lot of guys who know how things should go on the field already. So the new quarterback could just concentrate on his job on the field in terms of playing quarterback. And I, I think that's conducive to helping that guy fit in. Uh, we saw them all throw today. Lego is uh, the closest thing to uh, the graduated Nate Sudfeld physically and in terms of skill set, in my view. He's got big arm, can make all the throws. Uh, the key for him is going to be how quickly does he acclimate, master the, uh, the playbook, be able to make you know, the reads in a fast, up-tempo offense, and just, as I said, avoid turnovers, avoid negative plays, just kind of help the offense run because if the offense has a good general at the helm, I think this offense is going to score points. When we were up in Chicago last week for Big Ten Media Days, I know one thing we talked about when we were speaking with you on video was just some of the size Indiana has on its mm -hmm. offensive line. That was the theme of your column last week. And I think we're seeing a lot of size at other spots on that offense too, particularly yeah. at, at that receiver position in the backfield. I mean, we're seeing some big body receivers. So as you say, this offense is pretty much ready to go. It just needs that hand at the helm to kind of guide it. Right. One of the few position changes, uh, Donovan Hale, who was a quarterback last year, uh, shifted to wide receiver uh, largely because of his own desire. That's mm. what he wanted to do. Uh, Kevin Wilson thought he had a pretty good skill set at quarterback, but he thinks he has a pretty good skill set at wide out, too, and he's a big dude. Yeah. I mean, he's like 6'3", 210, maybe, something like and that. He's one of a handful and, of guys who really are in that, you know, that 215, 220-pound range. Yeah, you got, you know, Simi Cobbs, you got Nick Westbrook, you got a lot of guys. You got some, of the, some of the recruits that they brought in, Morris and, and, and Taser Mack, guys like that are big guys. Uh, so I think that you've got good size there. You've got good size in the secondary now, and that's kind of going to be a key thing. It was kind of fun to watch Tom Allen at work today, i got to say. Uh, yeah. Uh, uh, it, it's, he's, he brings the energy. He brings the pizzazz. He brings the juice, and I think that the guys are responding to that. That's a, it's, it, it's definitely different. I mean, I think uh, there's going to be a different aura, a different kind of sensibility around the defense. We'll see if that translates into better play, but you can already kind of sense that. The optimism is that a lot of those guys in that secondary are a year older. Uh, they are bigger with that year in a Big Ten weight room. Uh, and, and Kevin Wilson made the point today that really now against some of these spread offenses, you're really building your defense from the back. And, right. and that right now is basically what Indiana is doing. They have a very deep linebacking core, but they, there are a lot of pieces in motion, a lot of pieces that are going to be put into place, fit correctly, different schemat yeah. you know, schematically. But you're, you're really building from that back end, and that's Indiana's pretty optimistic of, of the guys, the bodies they have. Well, they had to secondary. play so many guys last year because there were so many injuries and so many freshmen and true freshmen had to play. Jonathan Crawford talked to him today, uh, who played well at safety at times last year and struggled at times, but he had to play hurt. Yeah. He, he told me that, uh, in fact, you know, he mentioned that the last two or three games, he wasn't even capable of doing a push-up because his shoulders were... were, were so impaired at that point. So, but you had a lot of guys get a lot of snaps. 
and they're more athletic back there, and now they're much more experienced than they were going into last season. So that's going to be interesting. If, in fact, they can get reasonably solid play there, they've got experienced linebackers. The only question is what kind of front Mark Hagan can fashion with uh, uh, having had lost like four fairly experienced right. players up front. But I think he's got prospects there. I think he's got guys who have played and also some good athletes up there. So I don't know. I mean, I, I just got to, I don't know if you had this sense, but I had a sense talking to everybody today that there was kind of a quiet, calm confidence that really seemed real to me. It, it seemed like a genuine, I think they went to a bowl last year. They knew they could have done better last year. They feel like they can play with just about anybody. And I think that's a belief. It's not just a hope. I think they believe that now. And I think they also see the guys who are around them. I think the offense sees Richard Lego. They see a guy coming in. I, I just think around the, across the board, the starting point's just a little higher than it was. Mm -hmm. Each year, the starting point is getting higher and higher for the guys who are coming in, the guys who are being fit in to take some of these roles. Yeah, there are question marks, and, and, and we're not going to really know the answers to those questions until we see what happens on the field. But I think there's reason for, for some optimism and reason to think that some of those questions might be answered affirmatively as we proceed. It'll be fun to watch how this team uh, develops over the next month. As you said, that season opener will be September 1st down in Miami against Florida International. We'll have updates from Indiana's fall camp throughout the month. Stick with us on the Hoosier Sports Report. Also check into the Hoosier Scoop blog and see more day-to-day -day updates from fall camp. For Andy Graham, I'm Mike Miller. Thanks.